Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to camera work. Um, another word, cinematography, you might be familiar with. And in this video, I'm going to go through common camera shots, framings, um, camera uh, angles, camera movements, and just try and explain to you uh, perhaps why they're used and what they connote. Okay, so the first camera shot we're going to start with is a close up shot. You will see that in a close up shot, the person or the item um, takes up most of the frame and we can see them in quite a lot of detail. A close up shot is really good for showing people's facial expressions or emotions. So if you want to draw attention to someone's sadness or happiness, for example, use a close up. And it can also make someone seem quite important or dominant because they take up so much of the frame, it adds to that sense of dominance. You can also, by contrast, have a long shot, and this is where um, the person is kind of, um, uh, we normally see a roughly the whole person. Now, this is um, this is almost a long shot, it's just under a long shot because we don't really get to see his feet. But you do get to see a lot, quite a lot of space around him, and we're seeing almost all of his body here. And that's really quite good for showing off somebody's body or costume or body language. So it allows us to see a person in relation to their uh, surroundings. We can see this person in relation to other people, um, and it allows us to show off their body language as well. In between those, you get a medium shot. So this is where you're seeing a roughly half of a person or an, an object. Um, and this is quite good for a combination, um, you know, whereas the close up was all about facial expressions and emotions and the long shot was about body language. The medium shot is that kind of happy medium where you're seeing a bit of both. You're getting to see their facial expressions and emotions, but you're also getting to see some of their body language as well. A two shot is um, very uh, obviously a shot with two people in it. Um, and it can also be like you can have a medium two shot or a close up two shot, for example. So it's um, it's not independent of those other things. You can combine it with other key terms. But the reason why you might choose to show two people um, in a shot together is because you want to show the relationship between those people. Um, so we can see, for example, um, that uh, these guys are friends, um, they've got quite a close relationship, um, and um, we can see that perhaps uh, this guy here is a little bit more scared than this guy who seems a bit braver because he's slightly closer to us and slightly larger within the frame. So two shots are very good for showing the relationship between characters. An establishing shot is um, basically where you show the location. So normally you would have an establishing shot at the beginning of your scene. Um, you see the building or you see the, see the city or the countryside or wherever it is your advert or music video or film, for example, is set. And it's good for making that setting clear so that we understand where we are, what time it is, what season it is, what the weather's like, and that helps to set the mood and the tone of the piece. And it makes it easy for an audience to understand what's going on. Low angle shots. A low angle means your camera is down low and therefore it looks up at people or things. And low angles generally make people look larger, taller, more dominant and more powerful. And you probably have seen this when you've opened the front camera on your mobile phones. Often you get that low angle shot of yourself. It can be quite unflattering if it's on a close up, um, but um, it generally tends to make people look larger, more dominant and more powerful. And by contrast to low angle, you can also have a high angle, which is where your camera is up high, looking down at somebody. And that person could be standing up, but in this case, it's Harry Potter is obviously lying on the floor. Um, but in general, that high angle shot where the camera is higher than the person, it generally makes them seem smaller and more vulnerable and weak and innocent. Um, so if you want someone to look injured, for example, um, or scared, you might put your camera up high looking down on them. And it often encourages the audience to feel sympathy for that person or character. Um, the kind of bit between that, if you don't want a high angle or a low angle, you might have an eye level shot. Some people, for example, to call it a straight angle shot. And that is where your camera is on level with their face looking straight at them. And that generally helps us to relate to that character. So it helps the audience to feel like we are just like them or on their level. And it positions us to feel kind of like we are like them. So it helps us to empathize with them sometimes. A canted angle is where you take your camera and you tilt it so it's not level. Um, and that is where um, you get um, people looking slightly wonky. So if you can see here, 
Uh, this is Tom Cruise, obviously. Um, and you can see that his head is at an angle here rather than being straight up. And it's sometimes these are quite hard to identify. But if you look in the background, if you look for things like door frames or the horizon and you notice they're all at angles, um, then you will notice that it's canted. And we often use those canted angles. Some people call these, call these Dutch tilts, by the way, um, that they make situations or people seem very chaotic, disorientated, or they can be used to make somebody seem drunk or drugged, dizzy, for example. So if something is quite chaotic or disorientating, they will often use a canted or Dutch angle. Um, a tracking shot. So this is where your camera is on wheels or a track and it tracks across a room or through a room or a location. It could be in a straight line. It could be um, wiggly and all over the place. Sometimes tracking shots are used to follow people, for example, or following a movement. Um, and often tracking shots are quite good at um, you know, showing us that somebody is moving. Sometimes it might allow us to see more than one thing in the scene. So, for example, in this particular shot, we see these school children sitting at their desks and then we see what they're looking at and we see the reaction of the boy that's standing up. Um, so um, it allows us to see more than one thing in a scene and how different things are arranged or related. And if the tracking shot is following a character, it shows their journey and it allows us to see them as being important because if we're following them, then obviously they're quite important. Um, the next type of camera shot is a handheld shot. This is when your camera is not on a tripod at all. Um, and it is um, often quite shaky. You see them in horror films quite a lot. Um, but a handheld shot often adds this sense of action, drama. It's urgent. It makes them seem quite chaotic and fast paced. And it puts us in the scene. It makes us feel like we're really there as though we are really I don't know, dodging the blows of these characters or, you know, it's so it feels quite real. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's quite dramatic. You can also have <laughs> when my PowerPoint catches up with us. Shallow focus shots. Um, shallow focus um, shots is to do with what is in focus in the shot. And a shallow focus means that only the things in a part of the shot are in focus. So, for example, at the moment, we've got this man here in the foreground, closer to us, that's in focus. But all the things behind him are blurry or out of focus. And you probably have um, the feature to do this on your phone. And often what you want to do is to make something seem important. So you might want to make one particular person seem important and other people to be less important or to draw the audience's attention to one particular person or thing. And the opposite of that is a deep focus, which is where basically everything in the shot, in the background and the foreground is in focus. Um, and that allows us to see all the surroundings, but it also represents everyone as being quite important because we can see all of them. A pull focus is where you're changing the focus in a shot. Um, this is it's called a pull focus because somebody's job is literally to pull the lens round on a camera and change what it's focusing on. So in this case, we're going from focusing on the cat in the background to the cat in the foreground. And this normally is done to change and, and what the audience is looking at and draw our attention from one thing to another um, to see that something else is important or to see someone else's reaction. So they're quite useful for that. You can have a bird's eye view shot. This is a bit like an extreme high angle. Your camera is again up very high, but rather than just looking slightly down at somebody at an angle, you're looking directly down at them as though you are a bird flying overhead. Um, so sometimes this is used for seeing something in its larger surroundings. So for example, seeing a person walking in a city, it might allow you to see the whole city from above. Sometimes it makes something look small or insignificant. So seeing this boat close up might make seeing the boat important. But if you're seeing the boat from this bird's eye view shot from high above, it makes the boat seem quite insignificant in comparison to the large amount of water around it. You can have a uh, zoom in or zoom out. OK, so this we're seeing a kind of zoom out here. And that is where the camera starts kind of slightly closer up on him and moves slowly out. You can get fast zooms and, and slow zooms and it could be going away from the person or towards the person. So if it's going towards them, it's a zoom in. 
and if it's going away from them, it's a zoom out. So this is a zoom out. And a zoom in where it went closer to him might focus our attention on that person or that thing. But a zoom out shows the bigger picture. So we're seeing him, first of all, on a close up at the window and we think, oh, it looks like a nice party. But as we zoom further out, we see it's snow. Everyone else is happy around him, but he's staring out a window and, and it makes him seem sadder because we're seeing the bigger picture. It's actually quite rare to see zoom ins and zoom outs in programs now like TV and film. You don't see them that often, um, perhaps more common in, in music videos or adverts. Um, this is a trombone shot. It's probably one of the most famous trombone shots. And I'm sure people have other keywords that they use for them, but trombone shots, pretty common key term. Um, the way it's done is um, the camera zooms out as the um, camera is tracked in or <laughs> the camera tracks out whilst the camera zooms in and it creates this effect of making it look as though um, the background is moving away from the person. It looks makes it look as though the background is getting further away and it helps us to focus suddenly quite dramatically on a person or a thing. So it's often used for major dramatic reactions. So this, if you know, this is from a film called Jaws and it's the moment where the, the um, uh, town uh, sheriff um, or police <laughs> sergeant, I can't remember his title, but it's the moment where he realises there is a shark in the water. So it's quite good for major events or dramatic reactions. A pan left or a pan right is where your camera stays in one spot, but it turns to look left or right. So it doesn't move from the ground, but you're just turning the camera around left or right. And it's quite good. It makes it uh, sometimes it makes us look like we are looking left or right as an audience or shows us where somebody is looking or shows us where somebody is going. Uh, in this case, it's showing us a ball that this man has thrown. Um, but it's it's to kind of draw our attention from one place to another, basically. You can also get a tilt up or a tilt down. Again, your camera is staying in one place. It doesn't move from the floor, but at this time it's looking up or down, not left or right. So a pan left or right, but tilt goes up or down. And this shows us the whole of an object or a person a bit at a time. So we start at the bottom of the tree and we go to the top of the tree. Um, sometimes if it's done with a person, it makes us look like we are looking at them, their body, and it can be quite objectifying. You see it quite a lot in music videos. This is a crane up. You can get crane downs as well. Um, but a crane is where they're literally using a kind of piece of machinery, like a small crane to take the camera from uh, maybe eye level all the way up into the air or from the air all the way down onto the ground. It can go both ways. Um, it can be quite dramatic. So if you're going from eye level uh, to kind of right up in the air, it seems quite dramatic. It can, can draw attention to someone's isolation or surroundings. So we're suddenly seeing that he's in this town on his own. Um, if you crane from further up down in towards somebody or something, that can suddenly draw our attention to that person or thing and, and make them seem quite important. Another shot you might see um, is a point of view shot. Point of view shot is literally shot as though the camera is the person who is looking at something. So you will often, it, it's often handheld, um, but it's often as though we, the audience, are the camera uh, and we are looking at things. And it helps put us as an audience in the position of the character. So it helps to engage us by making us feel as though we are the character. It helps us to understand them. So that was my easy to understand guide to camera, cinematography, different angles, shot types and movements. Please check out my other videos for analysing things like sound and editing as well.